professional shows like WAMU have a strong alumni community and showrunners depend on that community in order to help finance a proportion of the show. This year, the team was able to raise $15,430, surpassing their fundraising goal by over $400. But there's no action taking place on movie sets these days. But why? Well, that's because both the writers behind those movies and TV shows, along with the actors who star in them, are on strike. Experts say that only if the U.S. is able to find a compromise and aid in the humanitarian effort without overpowering the Taliban, then maybe true humanitarian efforts will begin to take place. La capital federal, eh, ¿qué, ¿qué se espera en el día de hoy de esta participación de, del gobernador en el Congreso de los Estados Unidos? Claro, pues como ya tú muy bien dijiste, esto es básicamente una reunión del Senado de este del Comité del Senado de Energía y Recursos Naturales, mm -hmm. donde básicamente van a discutir el futuro de los territorios de los Estados Unidos, obviamente incluyendo a Puerto Rico. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening. The sad and at times bizarre trial of an Idaho mother who was convicted of killing her two children and conspiring to kill her husband's former wife ended today with multiple life sentences. The judge ordering Lori Vallow Daybell to spend the rest of her life in prison without the chance of parole. Latino population grows across Wisconsin. It's left both political parties campaigning for their vote. Diego Ramos Bachara traveled to Milwaukee to hear from them. El voto Latino decidirá. The Latino vote will decide. A chant that echoed across Milwaukee's south side. We want people who will support us and we want to cause change. In this predominantly Hispanic neighborhood, Latino voters, young and old, want to make their voices heard in the midterm elections. We have a lot of other options, canvassing, phone banking. We need you. We need you. I need you. The rallying issue? Immigration. My main, the main issue that um, I'm voting for is immigration reform. Es que nada en estos momentos es migración. Christine Neumann Ortiz is Voces de la Frontera Action's executive director, a progressive group working to mobilize Latino voters. Our allegiance is to the community, and uh, our allegiance is to the dreamers, to the essential workers, to um, you know, the Latino people of color. She endorses Democrat Mandela Barnes for the U.S. Senate. That's all I needed to talk directly. So he has a very strong record of supporting immigrant rights. He, his platform right now is that he has strong support for immigration reform with a path to citizenship for 11 million. Wisconsin's Latino population is growing. State data shows they've grown by 46.8 percent since the 2000 census, a rate nearly 10 times faster than the state's overall population. In 2020, Latinos for the first time were Wisconsin's largest minority group making up 7.1% of the population. This has left Republicans and Democrats alike vying for their vote. Heller Tosti is the founder of Operacion Vamos. It's an outreach initiative sponsored by the National Republican Senatorial Committee to turn out Latino voters in key battleground states. About like if there's problems that they're seeing in their community yeah. to actually do something about it, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, but I want to give information. I'm actually here. Hispanic issues are American issues, right? They're worried about what everyone else is worried about. They're worried about can they feed their families? Is their job good? Um, are they safe? For Tosti, that means supporting incumbent Senator Ron Johnson. Sentiments echoed by Mario Herrera, a Republican voter from Waukesha. But if you remove that from the equation, whether you're Democrat or Republican, your bottom dollar is being affected. When you have to maintain a family when you have to put food on the table. That's where, that's what's going to drive you to vote this upcoming election cycle. The overarching goal of Operacion en Voces to increase Latino voter turnout, shining a spotlight on the population. But the work on the ground in Milwaukee is far from over. According to a Pew Research study, only 40% of Hispanic voters cast a ballot in the last midterm elections. That's out of a total eligible population of 183,000 voters. And for context, that's a much lower turnout than that of black and white voters. Only time will tell if come Tuesday, the Hispanic voting bloc has become a force 
to be reckoned with. For News 3 Now, I'm Diego Ramos Bachara. Uh, this annual and beloved Northwestern tradition back for its 91st performance this year. It's the largest student-written musical in the country. This past weekend, it returned to the stage following two years of virtual performances due to the COVID-19 pandemic. For all juniors, this show marks the first time they are able to perform in person, making their mark on stage instead of online. And so for me, this isn't actually being back in Khan Auditorium, it's just being in Khan Auditorium. Being able to be here has been so phenomenal. Annual shows like WAMU have a strong alumni community and showrunners depend on that community in order to help finance a proportion of the show. This year, the team was able to raise $15,430, surpassing their fundraising goal by over $400. Showwriter Mitchell Huntley said the writing team was inspired by mystery and whodunit films like 2019's Knives oh, Out and wanted good. to incorporate jazz music into the That's score. Great. We had such a strong team and collaborating with them was really important to getting something that sounded really amazing on yeah. stage. Joanna McKenzie Miller, a Chicago theater actor and stage director who directed this year's WAMU, commended the students' work. And a remarkable feat of uh, their talent and their focus bringing stage directions to life and turning sheet music into Broadway belts. A judicial crisis in Israel. For five straight months, Steve Rubin has taken to the streets of Tel Aviv, joining hundreds of thousands of Israelis in protest against Netanyahu's plans to overhaul the country's judicial system. However, what Netanyahu wants to do and what the people around him want to do is a kidnapping of the system and they're basically putting absolute power within the hands of the politicians. Among Netanyahu's proposed changes, the ability for the Knesset to pass legislation free from potential revokes from the Supreme Court. <laughs> Some gatherings drawing in more than 420,000 people nationwide. But it's not just Israeli Jews who could be impacted by these judicial reforms. A lot of Israeli Arab citizens, many of whom identify as being Palestinian residents of the state of Israel, express their concerns about the potential implications that these judicial reforms could have on their particular communities. Justice, we have no justice and we don't feel like we belong to the Israeli system yeah. or the Israeli state. Some Israeli Arab citizens have lost faith in the system entirely, like Taisir Khatib. They feel like it's, the, the, the damage has already been done to us, so we don't feel like it will be more worse. But there are some Arabs joining Israeli Jews in protest. I think there is an increasing understanding on the side of many Israelis how dangerous this government is. Mustafa Bargaudi is the general secretary of the West Bank-based political party, the Palestinian National Initiative. They say that this government that is using this level of violence will turn also on Jewish Israelis and use the violence against them. As resident of the diverse old city of Jerusalem, Izeldin Bukhar has befriended Jews, Muslims, and Christians alike, marching with many to protest Netanyahu. And I feel this government, it showed the true essence of this behavior, the Zionist agenda, and to push them out and to get rid of them. In the name, there was no state of Palestine ever to exist. Back in Tel Aviv, Ruben prepares for yet another week of protests. He says the people of the region have been and must continue to fight for the preservation of Israel's democratic norms. The only thing that we'll have, so they say us, no, don't worry, the politicians would never infringe upon our rights and start separating men and women on buses. That, But the religious power in Israel keeps growing and growing and growing. Then all I can do is to rely on the goodwill of the politicians, and that's the last thing that I need to do. A promised land, promising to bring people together. In Jerusalem, Diego Ramos Bachara, Medill News Service.